it's opportunities in the upper school and it's being able to have those opportunities in a known and safe environment, somewhere where the boys are already familiar with, uh, as in up to year six, but then they can move into year seven and eight with the knowledge that we are in a secondary model. Now I use the example of my own department in science where we have three specialist secondary trained teachers, a physicist, a chemist and a biologist. And so that of course gives the children incredible academic opportunities uh, to learn. And it's the same across all subjects. Every teacher is secondary trained and they have a passion in certain areas of their subjects. And this is where the PSB is so brilliant. It allows those staff to include those areas of their passion within their teaching and their topics. So it gives us a bit more flexibility here at the Beacon, which is a wonderful opportunity for both the boys and you as parents to be able to choose that. The advantage of staying for seven and eight are allowing the boys to develop so then when they change schools at 13, they are 100% ready to go. We often find a lot of boys as year ele at age 11, the end of year six, are just not quite ready for that big jump into senior school. They can grow and develop here and when they move on, they are totally and utterly self-sufficient and they also have that extra resilience to be able to make an even greater success of their senior schools. So we give them more roles and responsibilities in year seven and eight. And by being in a slightly smaller year group than they previously were in year six, the chances for them to be a leader, i.e. a head of house, a head of school, or even a sporting captain, become ever greater. And also this I mentioned about sports. A lot of the boys who have only ever represented the C and D and even E teams suddenly start to be able to represent A teams and they flourish in those roles. And you can just see them growing, not only physically, but also socially and also in every other aspect. All their education just rolls on from that and from those successes that they get and the notice that they get and the kudos from that within the overall school. I mentioned about responsibilities and roles. Performing arts, for example, they get greater opportunities to perform. And as they course get older, their quality, their playing gets greater. So they have more access to orchestras and then trips out from schools to play in other orchestras at other schools, for example, and the plays they do. In year seven and eight, every other year, we take groups up to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival so they can perform and showcase their amazing talents there. I look then also at trips that we do in the upper school. We have two trips every year for them. So in year seven, they'll go on a team building exercise right at the beginning. And then at the moment, they're doing a modern foreign languages trip at the end of year seven. In year eight, our, I think our flagship trip is the Battlefields trip, where they not only study First World War history, but also the literature and the poetry that around, surrounds that. On their return from the battlefields, they lead our remembrance service, which is an incredibly moving and dignified spectacle. In the summer, they have the traditional Year 8 Leavers programme and culminating in a week-long residential. So those are opportunities they wouldn't otherwise get at a, in a normal year seven and year eight programme as another senior school. So those little things give added value. The Shining Futures programme, which the boys will do in, this, in the year eight, is a wonderful programme to give them the skills and allow them to hone in on these skills which are going to be so critical for their future. We have lots of initiatives and some of them include peer mentoring, cooking and also presenting business ideas and it also incorporates the PSB as well which you will hear more about.
Um, the PSB is, a, uh, is the pre-senior baccalaureate and it's an assessment programme. It underpins um, our curriculum in the upper school and whilst it uses the, um, and we use, the common entrance curriculum um, to underpin what we do, it gives us a lot of freedom and um, in the upper school we have um, mainly specialist teachers, um, so the boys are taught at, by secondary trained teachers um, and therefore we've always got a mind to what's going on in GCSE and A level and we're bringing that back into what we're doing with those boys at the, the top end of the school. So the PSB brings us freedoms, it brings us great opportunities. Um, for instance, um, in English we learn in Year 8 about World War I poets and their poetry and, and what was the context for that in history. The boys are taught all about the causes of World War One, and um, then we go on a trip to the battlefields, which is just such a phenomenal experience for them, and it just brings everything together. They also learn about just war and um, uh, themes around that in SAS. So that's one of the top um, reasons, I think, and one of the, the really big um, positive aspects of the PSB, the whole idea that we can mould our curriculum to suit our interest to suit the interests of the boys we can change it year on year um, and it gives us a lot of um, creative freedoms to sort of to enrich what the boys are learning all of the time. I'm quite often asked by parents, um, you know, why should we keep our son here for year seven and eight? They've got great school options for year six um, and for when they leave, sorry, when they leave in year six for year seven. So why should we um, decide to keep them at the Beacon? And I think one of the main things, um, well, th there's many, many reasons actually that I would say that it's a good prospect to do that. Um, but one, one reason would be that um, from the outset, the boys that come into Year 7 are role models. They, um, they, they immediately are set apart from the rest of the school with their blue braid that they have on their blazer. So they look very distinctively different. That means that that comes with a degree of responsibility. So as a role model, they need to be carrying themselves in a certain way and you know, promoting themselves in a certain way. So that's really important. I think it's really good for them to be at the top end of the school and to experience secondary school life but still within the prep school environment. Um, the other thing is prep school um, is obviously preparatory school and we prepare the boys for their future lives, not just their future school careers. And I really do see and 100% believe that the boys develop enormously in year seven and eight. Um, and some boys obviously join us in year seven and just the maturity and the growth that comes about over those two years is, um, is, is really, really quite astounding. Um, and just the opportunities that they have to get involved in different things as well. So it might be positions of leadership. Um, it could be various things that my colleagues have also spoken about in terms of um, opportunities in um, all sorts of extracurricular areas, for instance but also with the enriching of the curriculum. One thing we do in year seven and eight, which, which I am still continually astounded by as well, is um, the PSPQ. It's very like um, the EPQ that year 12 and 13 students will study in senior schools. And it's a research-based project, but our boys do that in year seven. So they're learning all kinds of skills which will equip them for the future, equip them for senior school, but also for university and beyond. Um, and to be doing that in year seven is phenomenal. So that's another opportunity that they get um, and another good reason why I think the boys should stay in year seven and eight, because I just think they grow, they develop, they mature. Um, and of course, the class sizes are quite small as well. So that's really nice because everybody gets to know each other very well. Um, and there's a real sense of rebonding as well and, and reforming of friendships and new boys are very well um, uh, included in all of that. Um, one of the other things that the boys get to experience in the upper school at the Beacon is um, the Viva style presentations that they give for SAS. And some of us might be familiar with Vivas from when we did our degrees. Um, and so we'll know the level of intensity that goes into those and the research and the knowledge that has to be there. So um, that's something else which is a really um, forward thinking way of assessing. Uh, obviously quite oral, but completely based in the boys' work and research. And it's, um, it's really quite a privilege to hear those come to fruition and hear them deliver those. 
Um, another aspect of school life in year seven and eight and another part of, um, of our school preparation uh, for entry in year nine is our scholarship programme. So um, scholarships can all come in all different shapes and sizes and all different subject areas as well. With the academic scholarships, there's a bespoke program that runs depending on which schools the boys are um, looking to apply for and we will actively support them in that and of course we will always actively help and support parents in that process too because it is quite a minefield sometimes um, so that's something that we, we really pride ourselves on we run a biannual senior school um, information evening too where some really very prestigious schools come to the beacon um, and are really happy to, to meet with parents and boys um, and that helps but we also build very strong relationships with the senior school colleagues and the admissions teams so that we can try and always um, best advise and support with the process because it, it you know it's kind of tricky it's it's it changes quite a lot um, but the best way to deal with all of that is by communicating very clearly with the senior schools with parents with boys and trying to sort of make sure the, the relationships work really well. The core learning skills, I think, matter because we want the boys to have awareness of where their skills lie. So we have, as part of the PSB, which is our framework that we use in the upper school, we have nine core learning skills. And they are around things like collaboration, being a good listener, and so on and so forth. And there's an ongoing debate, isn't there, in education about what really matters. Is it more knowledge or is it skills? And of course we want our boys to have knowledge, but we want them to develop their skills as well. So our answer to that question is really both. And the reason that fundamentally we want, we want them to have this awareness is because we feel that when they come to enter the world of work, they will experience a very different workplace and very different careers to those experienced by somebody like me, for example. And the likelihood of them having a single career which lasts, say, 40 years, a lifetime, a lifetime of work, is, is very slim. They probably won't have that. They'll probably have to change jobs, change careers, reinvent themselves, do different things. And that's because of the pace of change, the amount of change and the change brought about by new technologies which are emerging all the time, such as artificial intelligence, which mean that some of the jobs that they might be interested in, that they might be planning as a future career, might not even exist by the time they enter the world of work, might have been rendered obsolete by technologies such as AI. And there'll be other jobs that are new jobs that exist, that are needed, that people are needed for, that won't even have been thought of, won't even have been invented yet. And so it's going to be important for them to be able to reinvent themselves. And I think that part of the key to success in that is by having that awareness of where do my skills lie and how can I transfer them, this idea of transferable skills, how can I apply myself to this new job, this new idea, this new area, so that they can continue to have successful careers in the future. So as our Beacon Boys come to the end of their careers with us at the end of year eight, what I want for them is, well, in the first place, of course, academic excellence. Of course, that's, that goes without saying, all schools want that. I want them to achieve academically to the full extent of their capability. But there's more than that. I want them to, whilst they are here with us, to come to some awareness of where their strengths lie, what it is that they're good at, maybe very, very good at, and to discover talents, aptitudes, things that might become lifelong interests for them or maybe even lifelong passions. So at the Beacon, you might be a remarkable sportsman and the captain of a team, or you might be a very, very strong swimmer, or you might be a fantastic mathematician, or you might be brilliant at singing and a member of an elite choir, or you might be a very, very accomplished chef and working in the cooking and nutrition room. Those are all things that you can do at the Beacon. Those are all things that you can excel at here. And we're very, very lucky in terms of the facilities and the opportunities that we can offer the boys because these are all things that they can try out. 
And by giving them a very wide range of opportunities and lots of different things that they can have a go at, try out, see if it appeals to them, see if it's something that they want to enjoy and take further. And if it is, then we might have sown something that remains with them for the rest of their lives. And if we've done that, if we've helped them to come to those discoveries, then I think that's a wonderful position for them to be in when they reach the end of their educational journey with us at the end of year eight. And I think part of the reason why that matters is that everybody's good at different things. That's what makes the world an interesting place, isn't it? Everybody has different aptitudes, different passions, and there will be something that every boy at the Beacon can do very, very well, possibly better than anybody else in the school. There'll be something that they can excel at, and if we can help them to find what that is, then I think that leaves them in a very strong position.